Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Happy Friday. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, my name is Tyler Clary. I'm the director of sales and marketing at Fitter and Faster Swim Tour. Welcome to another episode of Hashtag FFT Live presented by Fitter and Faster Swim Camps. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is uh, trying to brave the weather. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's actually raining on us right now. So we're only going to have one camera view. Uh, we've also got Coach Ben Lee here with us today. He's actually standing right behind the camera right now, and he's going to be using me as a prop. So I'm going to be out here staying nice and cold, and he's going to be up there staying nice and warm. A um, couple of things before we get started. Uh, first, we're going to be announcing the winners of our giveaway contest for this week. Again, we're giving away three gift cards, so if you entered in the giveaway contest, make sure you stay until the end, and we're going to announce the winners. Um also, we've got a whole bunch of shows coming out next week. Make sure you uh, uh, go on over to fitterandfaster.com slash live to check out all of our shows that are going on through next week. And we actually have a really exciting one going on, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. We're going to have the whole 1996 medley relay Olympic, uh, excuse me, medley relay team that swam at the 1996 Olympics. So we've got Jeff Rouse, Jeremy Lynn, um, Gary Hall Jr., and I'm forgetting one of them right now. I'm sorry about that. Uh, make sure you sign up for that one, though. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, Ben's going to be sort of instructing me today and sort of using me as a prop, and he can see all of your comments and stuff. So as we get started, I want him to uh, see where you guys are from and what swim team you're repping. And as any questions come through, he'll probably take some of that into account and um, answer some of those questions, and maybe we can do some drills that you guys ask for. All right, so Ben, what are we going to get started with? Yeah, so today we're covering butterfly, and we really have kind of four main points that we want to address. Some of the most common things that we're seeing in butterfly are dropped elbows in the catch, um, seeing an overpowered finish, seeing a disconnected uh, recovery cycle, meaning that you finish the stroke as one part of the stroke, and then you take a second effort to bring the arms back around, and then landing and setting up that high elbow entry for the catch. So, Tyler, let's just have you swim some butterfly, um, swim it well, and then swim it poorly with the dropped elbows and with some of the things that we just talked through so that people can see the difference and see how your body line shifts, and then we'll go through some drills um, to address some of those. Okay, and actually, while he's speeding up the machine, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a right arm, left arm drill just to warm up my shoulders a little bit. I literally just got in the water, so really important to warm up, and I'm old, so I don't want to blow out my shoulders. So I'm just going to warm up a little bit, and then I'll stop, give you guys a thumbs up, and then I'll start doing some proper butterfly swimming and showing what it looks like when people swim with dropped elbows. I see someone from Agua is in the room. Nice. Say hi to John Fadina for us. What's up, John? How are you, man? Speed it up a little bit. So even as he's warming up, it's really nice to be able to see how he makes sure that his hands are landing before his triceps in the back of his arm. He's been really deliberate to make sure that he's steering the water with the front half of his hand so that he can then skate forward with that hand as he sets up his fly. Alright, so my shoulders are a little bit more warm now. So I'm going to do four strokes where I'm sort of trying to swim as, as best as I can, making sure I'm getting my head and chest down and my arms get up above my head. Trying to get that nice high elbow catch. I'll do about four strokes like that. And then I'll try and do four strokes where I land and immediately drop my elbows. And you should watch how much more difficult it is for me to keep close to the front of the machine. So notice how his hips immediately sink when he drops his elbows, and now he's swimming uphill. He's got a lot of drag and resistance down below as that water's pushing at him from the motor. So that should have been pretty clear. I mean, as soon as I started dropping my elbows, it was very obvious that I wasn't able to push as much on the water. 
And Ben just signaled to me that it was really clear that my hip position dropped like crazy in the water. So we talked about this several times over the last two weeks when we did our backstroke and freestyle webinars, but we always want to imagine we're pulling with this whole surface. So from the tips of your fingers all the way down to your elbow. So by having a nice high elbow catch, I'm using this whole surface as a big boat oar to try and pull water back. But if I have a dropped elbow, now I can't use this and all I'm using is my hand. So another big piece of that is that, as you notice Tyler demonstrate out here, like above the water, you could see that he's moving, setting his arm up in a way to move water behind him. And when he started dropping his elbows, he started pressing water towards the bottom of the pool and also minimizing his surface area. So thus pushing his upper body up and his lower half of his body down, creating more drag. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Ben was talking to me a little bit before we got started about some of the early on drills that we wanted to do. And I'm gonna let him introduce that. But one of the first things, so one of the ways I like to teach basically every stroke is to start out with some really basic body position, understand how head and chest control changes your body position, and then we build from there. What's the first drill? So first one is the I to Y drill. So we want to start with our hands in the 11 position, so that's your I, and then when we sweep out just past our shoulders, that's our Y. Now the timing of this works, if you'll, Tyler, if you'll turn sideways so they can see when his chest and shoulders press forward, that's when he's going to his Y, and he'll come back to his I. How fast do you want this? Like Just 15? A bit faster. Okay. So notice how he's being really patient getting into the corners, extending as he presses out. And he's lining up that timing. So it's not a very kick driven drill, it's very patient. It's driven from the hips, driven from the shoulders and the chest. Good, Tyler. We were just talking about how it's not a kick-driven drill. Your legs pretty much just floated behind you, so it's very chest and, and hip-driven, and you're being patient around that corner. I want to see if you can get into that corner and turn that pinky around a little bit more shallow instead of, so, instead of going deep and completely losing that slide as you come back. So try to hold that water in that corner. And so notice how as he puts pressure on that pinky to come around, he still engages his entire forearm. There's no break in the wrist. It's a great connection through there. Awesome. So I was pointing out how your wrist was really connected as you got water around the corner. And so what we're leading into, guys, is we're leading into that setup of that high elbow catch for that, that main part of the butterfly pull. So our next progression is we're going to do a windshield wiper drill. Okay, so we're still pressing chest and then hips, chest and hips. And you should be able to see, so if you turn sideways, I want them to see the side angle. You should be able to see that elbow out of the corner of your eye. And you're angling your fingertips towards the bottom of the pool. So notice how he points his fingertips down. So it's not like a breaststroke pull or anything here. He's just lightly sculling in. Elbows are staying just slightly below the surface of the water there. And he's making sure he holds water as he comes in so he can get ready to press it down behind him or back behind him. So awesome. obviously we know that a lot of people can't get in the water right now, even though uh, it seems like some of the pools are starting to open back up here and there. But both of the drills... <coughs> excuse me, both of the drills that we just did are drills that you can actually do at home. So you can stand in, you know, in your bathroom in front of a mirror and you can kind of look up ahead to watch what you're doing in the mirror. So with the uh, 11, to, uh, 11 to 1 drill or I to Y drill, you can look ahead and sweep out, push your head down, sweep in, pick up just a little bit. Make sure when you're picking up your upper body, you're doing it from the lower back. We don't want that pickup to come from the arch of your back. So again, just press out, push down, 
come in, pull up, in and out, in and out, okay? And then the same thing for the windshield wiper drill, you can do this at home in front of the mirror too. Set up that nice high elbow catch from a side angle. You can even look at yourself sideways in the mirror too. And just sort of watch how your body is moving up on land. You can actually train your body to do exactly this stuff without even being in the pool. So when you get back in the pool, your body's already going to kind of sort of know how to do it. So just keep that in mind. Even though I'm able to get in the water, you can still work on this at home. And one of the fun videos that's been floating around Instagram, I'm not sure if it's turned into a challenge yet, but it's um, a swimmer doing some butterfly, actually going through the entire IM on her kitchen countertop with someone <laughs> holding her, her legs. And I think it's really awesome because it's, if, again, if you were to use a camera to record yourself doing this, or if you were to look at yourself by placing a mirror in front of you, it's a really easy way to see if your core is engaged um, and if your back is flat, like Tyler was talking about. And if you hang your uh, everything from your hips up over the edge of that countertop, it really forces that engagement and you can almost lay flat like your swimming butterfly and allow your chest and then your hips to move up and down. Uh, what drill do you want to do next? So let's go into a boom drill. So you're going to set up the same way with the windshield wipers. And we're going to go one, two, three, and then take stroke, finish through. Make sure you're holding that high elbow as you press that water through, and then just let the chest fall back down on the surface. Uh, give me a little bit more speed. So notice how he keeps his high elbows, keeps his entire large paddle from fingertips to elbow as he presses through. And it's just a really light flick at the finish. He's accelerating through his finish and he's pushing that water straight back. So you can really see his body surge as he does that. Tyler, now do that same thing, but let's take away the acceleration at the finish. You did a really nice job there um, showing that flick and that acceleration towards the end of the pull. Show them what it looks like when you don't accelerate and don't have that surge. Okay, good point. So uh, with freestyle and with backstroke, we talked about how we pull through the water. A lot of times we see people, because again, this is all about what we're trying to do right now, is not only show you some drills that you can use when pools open back up, but we're also trying to explain to you some of the mistakes that we see all the time from younger swimmers. And a lot of times in freestyle and backstroke, breaststroke and butterfly, all four strokes, we see people not accelerating towards the back of their actual pull. So in freestyle, they'll have just a constant hand speed on their hands. With backstroke, it's the same thing. Even though the direction of their hand is changing, the speed is not really changing. With butterfly, it just looks like this. Okay, so this last drill that I just did, I was trying to accelerate my hands towards the back side of the machine. Now I'm just going to try to keep a constant hand speed, and you should see that I'm not going to surge towards the front of the machine as much. So notice how he stays in, in place or almost gets pushed back just a little bit when he's not finishing through with that but hand Just speed. for comparison, now I'm going to do two rounds of that where I go three skulls in a, in a constant hand speed pull and then three skulls and an accelerating pull and watch how much farther forward I surge. So these are the constant hand speed pulls, and that's the one with an accelerated pull. So hopefully that should have been pretty clear on that video, the difference between the two, when you have a constant speed and then when you have an accelerated speed. Okay. Um, I want to do a drill right now um, that a lot of times I use just for teaching people how to do dolphin kick. And I call it shark kick. Some people may call it fish kick, um, exaggerated dolphin kick on your side. But all I'm going to be doing is kicking butterfly kick or dolphin kick on my side. And I'm going to be trying to move as much as I can side to side. And what we're really working on, the technical term for this is called thoracic mobility. So this part of your body is called your thorax or your chest, rib cage, whatever you call it. But another term for it is thorax. What's up, Ben? 
Hey, Jacob, that's a really good question about should the kick accelerate during the pull? Um, hang on to that thought. We'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, very good question. Um, so thoracic mobility. So if this is your thorax, so we know that, that the word thorax, thorax uh, refers to this part of your body. The word mobility obviously means to move. So what we're trying to get is a lot of movement through the rib cage. So we're trying to actually work on the rib cage moving during this drill. And the way I try to talk to younger swimmers about is imagine um, everybody knows what an accordion is, right? Let me know in chat if you know what an accordion is. It's that really weird instrument with piano keys down one side and buttons on the other and that weird slinky thing in the middle. So I want you to imagine when you're doing this drill, like your rib cage or your thorax is like that slinky thing in the middle. So when you kick forward, so when I'm kicking my feet forward, I'm trying to close down the space in these ribs and open up the space in the ribs on my back. And when I'm trying to kick back, I'm trying to do the exact opposite by opening up the space in these ribs and closing down the space on my back. So I'm just going to swim really easy. This drill isn't meant to be a speed drill. But once again, this is another drill that you can work on in front of your mirror just by trying to really close down these ribs and open up the backs and then doing the opposite. You can really work on this in front of the mirror. So let's see what that looks like in the water. So notice how he's kicking with both sides of his feet. He's working on his ankle mobility. He's really opening up that rib cage, leading with the hands, letting the head follow, snapping through to get all the way around both corners. Mr. I like to tell people you got to channel your inner wet noodle. Um, but again, this drill is, is uh, meant to work on your, your rib mobility or your rib cage mobility and also teach you how to connect the very top of your body, your hand, with the lower part of your body, your feet. Okay? And you should have been able to see that the same wave that I was creating with my arms was emanating all the way down through my body, all the way down to the tips of my toes. Yeah, I love that wet noodle analogy because I think of like slurping spaghetti noodles where it whips around the corner of the plate as yeah. it gets around there and watching you go back and forth as you flicked your toes and then pulled back with the back of the foot and let it follow through your whole body. It really looked like that. Yeah. What's next? So let's try to connect it together into our fly. Um, let's show them a couple strokes of a very disconnected fly. So let's go from boom where we finish out and then separate that from our recovery and then a couple strokes where we show an accelerated finish where it comes back around. Starting to rain harder. <laughs> All right, um, give me a little bit more speed and I'll try and separate them out. So here and then here. So instead of what we're trying to get you to see is that the butterfly should really be done in one, or the butterfly pull should be done in one fluid movement where you accelerate backwards and that sort of just propels your hands out into the front. But a lot of times we see younger swimmers who will pull and then recover. So I'm gonna to try to show you what that looks like where we have a disconnect between the pull and the recovery. So notice how much harder he has to try to throw his arms back around when he puts a pause in there versus when he's able to just snap oh, through terrible. with the legs and then flick and let the hands come back around. Yep. So just to show you the, the contrast there, I'm going to do three more strokes at the same speed doing the same thing I just did, and then I'm gonna do three strokes where I'm trying to connect everything and allow my backwards flick to propel my hands forward. So again, this is a disconnected fly. He's swimming uphill. Now he's doing three cycles where he's snapping and just letting that arm flick all the way around right back to his landing zone. So hopefully that was a pretty clear difference that one was significantly harder than the other. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, your kick had to go really drive down a lot harder as well. It wasn't as efficient. You were just traveling a greater distance. So it probably felt like you were putting more work, which sometimes, and this is a really great time to think about that guys. 
Like sometimes we think that something feels right simply because it feels strong and it feels powerful. Like we've put in a lot of effort and sometimes fast swimming shouldn't, doesn't have to feel that hard because you're moving efficiently through the water. So and, a lot of the best swimmers in the world, um, I forget who told me this, but someone told me this a long time ago. Swimming isn't about trying to beat the water into submission. In many ways, it's like you're trying to dance with the water. So when you're, if, imagine if you're, um, and I'm sure most of the people watching right now have done no ballroom dancing whatsoever. <laughs> but if you're trying to dance with somebody, you're not trying to manhandle the person that you're dancing with. It's all about a give and take, figuring out when's the right force to apply and how. So in swimming, like especially think about, for example, the 200 butterfly. If I was constantly trying to manhandle the water, before I even get to halfway, I'm going to be dead tired. There's no way I'm going to be able to finish that race. But if I've learned what actually translates into efficient swimming, especially for butterfly, because I think everybody would agree that butterfly is the most painful stroke there is. It's all about being efficient with your movement. So if I can create just a little bit of momentum by flicking my arms back and allowing that momentum in my arms to carry them forward, that's going to help me a lot over the course of a 200 butterfly. The way I try to talk to people about this or, or help them understand what I mean, um, let me know in chat if you've ever taken a rubber band and you've, and you've shot it at one of your friends. I do it almost every day. But what you should think about is when you flick back, it's kind of like you're pulling back on that rubber band. You're storing energy in that rubber band. So this flick back is when the rubber band should be fully stretched. And if you do that really well, the energy is going to be released as that rubber band comes forward because your arms are just going to sort of do it themselves. So I love that you went there. So stand up on that ledge for me so everybody can see and you have a little bit of room to move. And turn sideways. Okay. I want you to take your right or your left hand and you're going to bring your right hand up, put your left hand on your right wrist and just lightly press down so the arm sling, swings around and comes back in full circle. Now, see how relaxed he is. His arm just swings naturally in his own because he's not controlling it from his shoulder. So often what we yeah. see with younger swimmers is they lock up. Uh, Tyler, can you point up here where I'm pointing? Yep, so they can see it. They lock up this section right here. And so when they come around, they don't give dead weight, and they try to manually like bring locked. their arm back around, and it's really tight and really hard. Yeah. So this is, again, really something really easy to do you know, in front of a mirror or just at your house. And just practice. It's a light push. You're not slapping your hand really hard. Just a light push. Let that arm practice coming around and just learn what that feels like. That's good. Okay. Um, let's talk about breathing. 353? Oh, it's 353. Okay. Um, so let's talk about breathing for a second and then uh, we might do one or two more drills. And, and then let's get talk out. about that kick real quick as well. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about the kick too. Um, now I'm going to get out because it looks like the weather's getting a little bit worse. And honestly, I'm getting a little bit cold. <laughs> um, I'm going to do four or five strokes breathing the way I see a lot of younger swimmers breathing. So if you imagine that this ledge right here is, is, the, uh, is the breath and Ben's, Ben's making me laugh because he's doing what I see a lot. Uh, imagine this is the top of the water. A lot of times I see swimmers breathe with their heads literally way up here. And it's almost like they think the air up here is better than the air is down here. But everybody, I want everybody to tell me in chat, you guys know who Michael Phelps is? I'm willing to bet most people know who Michael Phelps is, but there's really like a lot of famous pictures of him. And one thing he does amazingly well is he gets his chin right down on the surface of the water. So when he's breathing, it looks like he's just barely skating over the surface. So a lot of us should really be trying to breathe like him, trying to get his ch your chin as close to the surface of the water as possible. But I see a lot of people literally breathing this high out of the water. And all that's doing is wasting energy. So think about it. If I'm trying to go this way, I want to be pushing it in the exact opposite way the whole time. But if I'm trying to pick my head way up to breathe, that means I'm having to push downwards in order to make that happen, which is a waste of energy. Whereas if I just try and breathe lower, I'm spending more time pushing backwards, which is resulting in me going forwards. So what I'm going to do is four or five strokes where I'm going to pick my head up and breathe the way we see a lot of younger butterflies breathe. And then I'm going to follow that up with four or five strokes where I'm trying to breathe as low as I possibly can. And it should be really difficult for you to see me actually getting air in my mouth because I do something a little bit different from Michael in the way I breathe. 
Michael tends to look forward. So imagining this is the surface of the water. Michael tends to look straight forward when he does his breath. I'm a little bit different in that I try to drag my nose and my chin across the surface of the water. So I just barely have this little pocket right here to breathe. So it should be very easy for the first four or five strokes to see me breathe and then very difficult for you to actually see me breathe on the next four or five. Can you uh, give me like 55? Hey, Rachel, good question. We'll give you a few more drills that you can do at home here in a second. So right now, if you're watching him lift his head to look forward, notice his elbows actually tend to drop a little bit too, and his hips start to sink lower. Now, as he lays down into his stroke, it's a little easier for him to just push that water straight behind him. He's surfing his chin. Tyler, let's do um, 10 more strokes, and I want you to sneak two breaths in the 10 strokes. And I want them, you guys, I want you on chat to see if you can tell me which stroke he snuck his breath on. Oh, with my good breath? With your good breath. So comment on chat, whether it's two, whether it's stroke four. Here we go. So stroke three was one of them, right? Yep. Could you even see the second one? I didn't one? see the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So I think that was pretty obvious what the difference was. Um, we've had a couple questions for more drills to do at home. And then let's talk about that kick, whether it's uh, we should accelerate the kick as you're accelerating that arm through the pull. Yeah, I think... Um... So one drill that you could do at home to work on the breathing that we just talked about would be to take like a, you know, a kickboard or something flat and relatively large and just find a way to just barely clear your mouth above the surface of that kickboard to breathe and then put your head back in. So maybe, for example, um, if you're using, you know, if you're doing the 11 and 2 drill or the I to Y drill, you can use... The, uh, the surface of the bathroom counter to just get really close. So as you push down, obviously you're gonna have to look forward, but as you pull in, keep your mouth really close to the surface here so that you feel what it's like to help, you know, allow the, the rest of your body to sort of come up, but keep your head down because some of the tendency for younger swimmers is that when they get back here, is to really try to arch the back and bring the head up really high. So that might be kind of a little trick. And honestly, folks, like some of the drills, I'm willing to bet, you know, let, let us know in chat if anything that we've talked to you about is something that you haven't heard before. But really all that we're doing is trying to be creative with drills that we already know that you guys have probably already seen before. What we're trying to do is show you some of the mechanics of good butterfly, or at least as good as I can make my butterfly look here in the pool so that you understand what's going on but it's really going to help your understanding of the sport and really of the stroke if you start thinking about, okay, well, I have, I have a kickboard and I can use this in this certain way to make sure that I'm getting that high elbow catch. Or, uh, for example, one thing you could do, talking about doing butterfly on top of a, your kitchen counter. By the way, parents don't get mad at me for this. But if you were to lay on top of your kitchen counter and just put your arms over the edge of the, the counter, you can really work on getting that high elbow catch by feeling this out, just by sitting there nice and flat and feeling what that's like. And you can do a little bit of sculling and imagining what the feel of that water is like. And over time, you can figure out how you can sort of position your body to get that full 90 degree angle. The best swimmers in the world, some of the best butterflyers in the world, they can all get that super high 90 degree catch. So. Be creative with stuff you have at home. You can use stairs, um, a You can use a chair even. You, even. you chair. can put the chair in front of that counter and put a little bit of a weight, maybe put a couple textbooks or a book bag in it so that you can feel the weight and that pressure as you pull back on that chair. Kind of like how we set up the freestyle um, at home pull exactly. last week. Exactly. 
at the end of the day, guys, it's really about just being creative and learning that body awareness during this time. Like, yes, we're setting up this 90 degree catch, but pay attention to, hey, what are my lats doing? And lats are, hopefully everybody knows this, but lats are that muscle right under your armpit. You pinch it right there. Yep. And you can feel like, hey, which parts of my body are being engaged as I'm trying to make sure that I have my fingertips down, my wrists connected, yep. pinkies all the way to, to elbow. Absolutely. So let's do uh, one more drill. Ben, you had a kick drill that you wanted to work on or you wanted to talk about the kick? I just want to talk through the acceleration and the kick um, and talking about how the kick times with that recovery to help, again, yeah, drive okay. that loose recovery so, back around. I guess uh, give me uh, one double O on the machine. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to try to do is swim a little bit uh, slower butterfly, and then actually we can end up swimming as fast butterfly as we can or as, as the machine will let us go just so you guys can see what my fastest butterfly right now looks like. But we're going to start off doing some slower butterfly first. And what I want you guys to notice is especially back here when I'm kicking. So I'm not like constantly trying to move my feet through the water as fast as I can. I'm trying to time the downward kick with two separate things that are happening. So when I'm actually entering this way, I'm trying to kick downward. So I'm entering my hands. I'm trying to time a downward kick. And then when I'm exiting my hands, I'm also trying to time a downward kick. So as slow as I can make it, and swimming slow butterfly is kind of difficult, but I want you to notice that I'm kicking down here and here and here and here. Okay, so let's just see what that looks like. Did you guys see the snap? He's trying to really overemphasize the snap right now. This is a little exaggerated, so you're not seeing how he would normally get around the corners of bringing his feet back up for the up kick. But he's really just trying to emphasize timing for you here right now. Okay, so that was really clear about the timing. Um, let's let's demonstrate how the kick, the down kick has to connect with the up kick as well. Cause obviously I was a little over exaggerated. You would never sit at the base of that kick right. forever. So I like to think about boxers because the, the sting of the punch doesn't come from me landing that punch and just holding it onto you. It it's, comes from the follow through of getting back off of that punch and using that core to get off the punch. Okay. So uh, like just faster butterfly. Yeah. Faster kick. Think about, Whipping that kick back up, leading with the toes. Like 56 or so. So notice how he's kicking his hands out of the water. So he's accelerating. He's flicking like we're trying to flick someone behind us. And he's letting that hand come all the way around. At the front of his catch, or his recovery, his hands are landing before his triceps. So he's making sure there's a nice little arc right here. He lands, and then he extends as he sets up his second kick. So now so he's able to skate just, out. It's not just landing in the water like this, unless you're a really big, burly, muscly sprint butterfly. You don't just land and immediately start pulling. You sort of land with your elbows up high, skate forward, and then do your high elbow catch. So, um, let me catch my breath. I'm just going to swim butterfly now. We're going to uh, crank the machine up to as fast as it can go. And I'm going to try to do 10, 12, maybe 15 strokes that way. Just so you can kind of see how everything's put together when I'm trying to swim at speed. And then I'm going to hop out of the water go around up behind the camera we'll put the camera around answer a couple of questions and then announce the uh the winners of our giveaway all right so we're gonna get this bad boy down to 51 uh, 100 yard pace fast as machine can go and let's take a look jacob the end goal on that angle is about 90 degrees So notice he's just staying relatively flat in the water, just lightly seesawing. You can see the snap of his kick. 
Vicious toes are breaking the surface. It's not a big, floppy, bouncy kick. Uh, a lot of times as well with younger swimmers, we see that foot come all the way out of the water and there's a massive splash, but really you're just kicking a lot of air straight down instead of putting that, pushing that water behind, behind you. Let's actually finish out with just a quick kick, just holding the bar. Okay. And see if you can set it up where they can hear the difference between a big thump as though I'm dropping a weight into the pool where, you know, you're bringing your feet too high out of the water versus a ripping paper sound. So do you guys hear the, how hollow that is? So he's locking in his core, he's flicking through his toes, just trying to create that ripping paper sound. So every time I'm kicking down, the only difference is on the second round of kicks where it was more of that sound of ripping paper, I'm imagining someone's punching me in the gut, and I'm using that to pull my legs down, as opposed to relaxing here and, and allowing my legs to kick way back this way. Which means that he's driving off through his knees and his quads. Very good. All right. All right, guys, we're going to flip the camera around out. here. Tyler's going to hop out, and we'll do a little Q&A uh, from the porch here and then announce our giveaway winners. Okay. Just do it like this. All right. Move this right here. Okay. So. All right. So, um, uh, Evan Wagner, I, it's too late at this point to enter the giveaway, but we are actually going to be doing again, doing it again next week. And you need to look for a very specific post. Um, I don't know where my phone is right now. Actually, let me grab that so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, hold on just a second. Good question about the giveaway. Let me pull this up here. All right, so this post on Instagram, you should be able to see our Instagram right there. It's Fitter and Faster Swim Tour on Instagram. I want you to find that post, okay? I want you to find that post. And there are a couple things that you can do. So if you post this calendar on your story and you tag us, that counts as one entry. If you repost this calendar on your own Instagram feed, so like as if it was on your own feed of pictures on Instagram, that counts as five entries. So that's the best one to do. Okay, if you comment on this calendar post and you say which webinar you're looking forward to the most and why, that's one post, okay? Makes sense? The next giveaway is gonna be on Friday, once again, so we always do the giveaways on our Friday shows during these endless, uh, during these uh, live stroke demonstrations, okay? Um, Michael Viner, if you continue spamming, I'm gonna ban you, buddy. Don't do that. Okay, um, so, before we announce the giveaway winners, um, we do know who won this giveaway. There, there were three winners. We're going to give away three $50 gift cards. Okay, so that's basically free $50. Everybody likes free stuff, right? Um, when uh, Before we announce those people, though, I want to hear if you guys have any questions for Ben and I. Um, Sydney Stromberg asks, do, uh, Tyler, do you breathe on every stroke? I actually do breathe on every stroke. Um, it's not something that I would recommend for everybody because if you don't breathe correctly, it can really lead to uh, being tired in your race. And obviously we want to try to manage being tired as much as we can. So I would actually um, try to get people to do two up, uh, excuse me, two down, one up or two down, two down, one up. Um, that's a good way to do it. Um, let's see here. Olivia Yee asks, What's your favorite stroke? Backstroke is my favorite stroke by far. I'm one of those weirdos that likes backstroke. 
Someone asked earlier about head position uh, and some dry land exercises. I'd love to demo something here if you want to hold the camera for me. Sure. Here, switch. So, so this is a dry land exercise that you can do from home. It's easier to see. All right. So one of the things that I like to do is going from a Superman into a W scap retraction. So with a Superman, I'm going to start with my face down. And then I'll pick my feet up and my hands up. And I'm going to make sure I'm still growing that line so my head's not tucked down or lifted up too high. Someone asked about how it relates to breathing. I'm keeping that core engaged, so I'm trying to minimize the arch of my back. And then I'm bringing my hands back to a W, squeezing my scaps, back to the Superman, and then back down. So notice how patiently I was going through those details. It's really important to to slow some of these exercises down so that you're thinking about what the rest of your body is doing. If I rush the breathing, here's what that looks like. Okay, notice how it was generally in the right position, but there is some movement that I could have mitigated there by just teaching my body how to move all together exactly at once. And I'm making a small correction. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Just trying to relax my neck a little bit, grow that line, and then come back down. Very good. Very good. Um, somebody somebody had a question about breathing, and I'm going to use this little futon thing as a way to, sh to demonstrate that. So I, I don't know who asked the question, but somebody asked if they need to be looking forward or down when they're breathing. And chat, I'd love to know if you guys know the answer to this question. Should you be looking forward or down when you breathe? But for a second... Let's imagine that this is the surface of the water. So Michael Phelps does things a little bit differently from me. He just sets his chin on the top of the water and he looks forward. But in my opinion, if you, if you pick your head up, that's going to cause your hips to drop. So if you can keep your nose and your chin at the surface of the water, therefore your eyes stay down, it's more likely to breathe with your hips staying nice and high. Okay. So it is kind of your choice. If you can get it done looking forward like this and your hips stay nice and high, good for you. That's awesome. But the way I tried to always breathe, and I think you guys saw this when I was swimming, was I would always try to breathe with just my chin and my nose barely clearing the surface of the water. Okay. And in both uh, types of breathing, we talked about this a little bit in freestyle last week, where as your head's pushing along that surface of the water, um, there's a little dip where everything drops right behind your, as your body travels through, and they're breathing in that gap where the water drops yeah. away. Um, Peyton Schmidtke asked, what is, what is your 200 fly breathing pattern? Um, in my 200 butterfly, I breathed every single stroke. So I would not breathe when I was uh, coming out of a breakout. So I would do my dolphin kicks. I'd do one stroke without breathing, and then I would breathe every stroke. But when I was young, I breathed one up, one down. So I would, I would breathe, I would not breathe, and then I would breathe, and then I would not breathe, and then I would breathe, and that's a pretty good way to go about it. Um, at what point, Emily McMahon asks, at what point of your stroke should your head be going back down after breathing? So I'm breathing, I'm trying to breathe when my, when my arms are all the way back here, and as my hands come up past my head, right when they're getting out to 90 degrees, that's when I'm actually starting to drop my head and bring my hands forward. So I'm breathing here and then dropping my head. So it's almost like I'm trying to have my breath done and my head should be going back down by the time my hands exit the water back here. And the reason for that is so that if you do it again slowly, you can see how that creates room for his hands to come back around for his landing. If his head stays up, then now he's swimming uphill as he's trying to bring those hands back down and around. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a couple of questions asking us to summarize everything we worked on today. You guys are actually going to get a, an email. So everybody that was here, you're going to get an email that um, has a, a link to the replay of <coughs> this webinar. So you, you can be able to go back and watch that sucker as many times as you want. Okay. So if you didn't get everything on this first webinar, don't worry about it. You're going to be getting the replay, and it's very easy for you to go back on the website and actually look that up, okay? All right, so let's see here. All right, let us know in chat if you guys want to know 
who were the winners of our giveaway. Michael Vayner, you're being banned, my friend. No spamming. All right. I've, I've banned Michael Vayner. I'm tired of the spamming. All right. Um, okay, cool. So everybody seems like they're ready. Let's go ahead and uh, flash that up on the screen, Ben. All right. All right. Amanda Nybauer Dunn, um, Adrian Wright, and Carlin Rappaport. Okay. Congratulations, guys. All right. Those are the winners. Um, we're going to be sending out, you guys will uh, get an email from us uh, within the next day or so, probably sometime over the weekend, and you guys will get that $50 gift card. All right. So, Thank you very much for entering in the giveaway. We really appreciate that. We couldn't do this without you. Um, and again, there's another webinar or another giveaway going on next week during our, uh, our, our uh, live stroke demonstration breaststroke webinar. So make sure you go over to that post. Once again, this is the post that I want you to be looking for. Okay, this is the post on our Instagram. If you find that post, all the instructions on how to enter the giveaway are right down here under the post. So check that out. Make sure you enter because everybody likes free stuff. Um, that being said, thank you everybody for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you sign up for any future webinars that you see. Have a great weekend. Be safe. And watch your oh. <laughs> Sorry. Camera drop. Be safe. Wash your hands. We'll see you next time. See you guys.